Hello, welcome to worship at Bethlehem Lutheran Church for August 22nd. Uh, we do have several announcements. Sophia Kron has joined the Bethlehem staff as our youth director, which is a huge thing, it's wonderful. And she began her duties on August 16th. We also have an announcement as far as service times. Starting on September 12th, we will have services at 9 a.m and at 10.30 a.m. We're gonna add a little bit more liturgy into our service, and but communion will still be part of worship the first Sunday of each month, and we are gonna start offering communion following each service on the other Sundays up at the front of the sanctuary. We are still looking for a youth choir director and an accompanist, so, these are paid positions, so if you or you know someone who would be interested, please contact the, the church office. We also are in need of a companion to sit with a man in the early stages of Alzheimer's just a few hours a week while his wife is at work and other help is unavailable. So if you're interested, please get a hold of Pastor Tim. We will continue to sit every other pew during our services and we are gonna have a limit of 70 per service. We strongly encourage masks, and we're gonna continue with the offering baskets at both doors of the sanctuary. So please calm your hearts and your minds as we begin our service to worship our Lord. We gather together as a community of faith, the church living in and outside of this building in the name of God the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please join me in our confession and forgiveness. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. In this time of reflection, let us confess our sins silently in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in our thoughts. We have sinned against you in our words. We have sinned against you in our deeds, what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, mind, and being, and we have not loved our neighbors, your children, as you have loved us. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your delight and will for creation and walk along the path that you walk and have set before us. To the glory of your holy name, amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loves us even when we are dead in sin and makes us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you.
psalm today is Psalm 84, verses 1 through 12. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, indeed it faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. At her altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. O Lord, God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good things does the Lord uphold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trusts in you. Please join me now in our prayer for the day. Almighty God, your work is not easy, but it is life-giving to the world and those who follow you. Keep us faithful to the journey we have begun in you with our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. We are reading from chapter 6, verses 56 through 69. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, Sabbath is difficult, but it is necessary for us to live well. I mean, did did you hear the disciples in that passage? I mean, talk about a bunch of whiners. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? 
But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Now, if I were Jesus, I would have cuffed him on the side of the head and said, Buck up, buttercups. And maybe that's what he needs to do to us, to help us observe the Sabbath. In the early 1900s, there was a Hungarian psychologist named Sandor Ferenczi. And he observed that around the Sabbath day, many of his patients had headaches, stomach aches, nausea, increased anxiety, and dejection. Viktor Frankl later gave this phenomenon a name. It's called Sunday neurosis. And he made a couple further observations about it. For one, it seemed related to an existential vacuum, a fear of emptiness or meaningless that people sensed when they were alone or still. And second, he noted that they tried to fill this vacuum with various excesses and compensations like worry, binge spending, avoidance behaviors, eating, drinking, overworking. And why? Why is it so hard to receive the Sabbath gift of rest and freedom? Well, fear plays a big part. Um, fear of that emptiness, fear of falling behind or missing out or feeling your emotions, fear of what you'll feel or hear, if you slow down long enough to pay attention. Fear of what you'll find or maybe not find beneath all of your activities and masks. I was once asked to be on a state committee for the Episcopal Church, specifically on keeping the Sabbath. Keeping Sabbath sacred. Well, you know what, I couldn't be on that committee because I was too busy on Sundays coaching soccer and being at tournaments. I mean, talk about an oxymoron. And then there's pride too, which tells us that we're too important to really unplug, that the world would never make it without us holding it up and steering it. And I so can relate to that one because when COVID-19 hit, I had a God-given feeling to retire, but I kept saying, God, how can I do that? You know, I'm a nurse, I'm needed. You know, I, it should be I in there on that fight. And how could the nation go on without me being there taking care of patients? And God told me in no uncertain terms, it is time for you to step down. You are replaceable. I mean, talk about humbling. And then we have the real external pressures, you know, the needs of our families, um, increasingly superhuman expectations of what you can accomplish, workplace that are never quite finished with you, and a society that says you never have quite enough. Well, the good news is, is that God knows about our Sunday neurosis and the pride and the fear and the pressures that drive it and our tendency to try to wiggle out of it, which is why perhaps God gave us the Sabbath to begin with and why Jesus calls us back to it and reminds us that the Sabbath was made for humankind. The Sabbath was made for humankind and not the other way around. Because Sabbath is an obligation, but it is also a gift. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And remember that the Sabbath was made for humankind, not humankind for the Sabbath. So the man, son of man, is Lord, even of the Sabbaths. One of the best ways to keep the Sabbath holy is to devote time in worshiping God. I mean, during the other six days of the week, it is so easy to get caught up in all our responsibilities. But on Sunday, you can take the time to turn your thoughts and hearts to God. 
attend church, read the Bible, talk to God in prayer. I mean, just those activities can help us feel closer to God even after the Sabbath has passed. But without some planning, Sundays can easily become as busy as other days of the week. Plan the rest of the week with Sabbath in mind so that you do have plenty of time to rest and worship. Run errands, clean your house, get other tasks taken care of on Saturday maybe when possible. And that way you can keep the Sabbath day separate and holy. The Sabbath may be a time for us to rest from our labors, but this doesn't mean we can't do anything on Sunday. We can choose to do activities that focus on God, family, and providing service. You know, how about visiting friends and family? Write in your journal. If you don't have a journal, get one. Maybe learn about your ancestors and your family history. How about going for a walk and really enjoying it? Take food to someone who is sick or housebound. Call, text, or message a friend who's been on your mind. Plan or participate in a service project. Or maybe Sundays could be the weekly family game night. God has promised amazing blessings to those who keep the Sabbath holy. It will strengthen your family relationships and it will give you great focus and confidence. As you show the Lord your love for him by keeping the Sabbath holy, you will feel his love more in your life. When I first started seeing Mike, my now husband, I thought he was a bit weird because you know on Sundays, he wouldn't do anything he didn't want to do. He told me, he said, don't do anything you don't want to on a Sunday. If you want to do it, that's fine. But otherwise, it's a day of rest and relaxation. I thought it was just odd. But it was also like someone was giving me permission to do nothing, even though God had told me this a long, long time ago. Well, I follow this to a T now, let me tell you. It's a day I don't have to do anything I don't want to. I even make our dinner for Sunday on Saturday in a crock pot, so I don't even have to cook. It's such a liberating feeling, and it's also very spiritual. And I want to thank Mike for allowing me to truly honor the Sabbath. From Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, or your livestock, or your sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them. And he rested on that seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Amen.
Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you and also with you. Please join me now on the prayers of the church. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. You have the words of eternal life, O Lord. Write them on our hearts that we might live the joy of the gospel each day of our lives. God of glory, hear our prayer. We pray for the elderly among us, the healthy and the ailing, the cherished and the forgotten. Give us deep respect for those who have preceded us on this earth, that we might know who we are and become who we might be because of their example. God of glory, hear our prayer. Even the smallest bird finds shelter in you, loving creator. Give us compassion to love earth's creatures and strive to protect them in their habitats. God of glory, hear our prayer. Happy are those who turn to you for healing and wholeness, O Lord. Bless them with your mercy and goodness. And keep all those whose names we bring before you today members from our Bethlehem community, Lori Asmus, Darren Baumgartner, Sylvia Borschert, Linda Detman, Grayson Hughes, Carrie Leach, Alan Oak, Dwayne Peterson, Stan Skogan, and Mariah Winters. From those from outside of our community, Dennis Cook, David Costello, Elma Dorr, Michelle Erfel Johnson, Cynthia Granger, Lois Kirk, and Terry Olschlager. And please extend your sympathy to Frank Marquette and the family on the death of Anne. God of glory, Hear our prayer. Hear these prayers, O Lord, and assure us that all is being provided for our highest good. For the sake of Jesus, amen. And now if you will join me in saying our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And as you go out today, may all blessings be upon you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.